Good morning, you guys. We're ready for the weekend with our weekend love bites. Thanks guys so much for being here. I am just like excited. I love doing these readings. These are super fun for me. Really easy, short and sweet, all the good stuff. So for those of you who are new to the weekend love bites, okay, we have these readings geared toward your Venus signs, especially if you're a woman. If you're a man, you can check your Mars, but the Mars applies to everyone's sexuality as well. So you can feel free to check both signs. You're always welcome to, to check your sun, moon, and rising, if I can speak, Mercury retrograde, um, the sun, moon, and rising as well, and just kind of find what sort of resonates the most for you, okay? So yeah, let's um, just go ahead and dive right in here. Thank you guys so much for being here. Aries, let's talk about your sexual component, which came out as the Ace of Swords. First of all, I mean, just the sword itself is hypersexual, you know, um, there is a component of really wanting to connect with someone and wanting that surrender, right? Because when someone bonds you, bondages you, all right? Um, or when you're bondaging someone else, like there's a great exchange of care and trust going on between the two parties there. Um, for those of you who have sex available to you, you know, there is going to be this desire to, I don't know, pounce maybe like, oh, like, let's do this. Let's have fun. You know, let's just, oh, I'm like all charged. Um, for those of you who don't have it available to you, it can be a little bit tricky uh, how to transmute that kind of sexual electric charge that goes on and just sort of transition it from you with another person to you with the universe, okay? And so, um, but that's maybe what you're going to have to do, right? Um, it's probably not advisable to go out and have just like really casual sex right now. You know, it's probably not going to be in your best interest to do that simply because of the connection that's going on with the Mars and Pisces right now. Mars is especially relevant to you, obviously, because it's your um, ruling planet, right? And so there's this fine line. It's a very intricate kind of state of mind. Um, and the connection and the absorption of energy with other people is really heightened right now. So be careful about your partners if you are casually dating people, you know, be careful, be picky, be selective in spite of that kind of feeling of really wanting to connect in that way. Okay, but this is a great way to start out the week. Again, it's only a week long. So um, let's go ahead and move into the relationship reading. Okay, Aries who are in a relationship, you get the card of Pisces reversed. Yeah, of course. Um, Mars in Pisces. Yeah, okay. So here you are. I think you're feeling very disoriented, right? You're feeling a little bit weird. You and your partner are definitely disconnected. I don't know what's going on between the two of you. You guys are really just in your own two little worlds here, running away from each other, both kind of reversed. Maybe something happened. Be careful of this Mercury retrograde in a fellow fire sign as well, um, who's doing something crazy with Neptune too. I mean, like there's, there's weirdness in the air. So you need to be prepared for that. When you communicate, be sure to be clear and concise and logical and not, you know, ugh, aggressive in any way. Um, the good news is, is that your channeling energy or the energy between the two of you is actually very nurturing and caring and loving. So it's not as though the love went away. It's just that maybe you guys kind of got, it's like you, you went out for a walk in the forest, <laughs> you took the path, and maybe you each kind of got distracted by your own shiny objects. You know, your partner, partner went here, you went here, and the, you will reconvene later on. <laughs> like you will find each other again. Uh, you just gotta get kind of lost in your own little dream world. I'm very concerned about your partner right now, okay? Because the Seven of Swords is a really rough energy and they can be really dealing with some very destructive belief structures and it's toxic stuff for them just as an individual, but to bring that into a relationship as well is also quite toxic. Um, any kind of fears and doubts that they are operating from can be really detrimental to the relationship. And I'm wondering if it's kind of turning you off a little bit and you're kind of like, oh my gosh, like, can you get over that please? Because I'm sensing with the Knight of Cups reverse that that feeling of compassion is waning. Your patience is running thin and you are starting to like have to be very conscious 
about how you're dealing with this particular thing, um, with this particular issue, with this particular mindset within your partner. Just remember that they might not be as conscious as you. Maybe they're not sitting here watching these tarot readings with you. They're not watching astrology readings with you, right? So they're just not as aware. Um, the more that you can do to educate them, they don't have to watch tarot and astrology, but they can watch, you know, spirituality or watch some science videos and see Haramine or whatever um, to kind of help them figure out that this isn't all to life and that their belief systems isn't all there is. Um, so you may need to kind of take, again, Aries taking the lead, what a surprise, take that lead and kind of guide them and kind of show them the way because you still love them clearly, you still care about them clearly. Um, and I think so many of you want them to just step out of this and just like step into their own, you know? So be careful though, Mercury retrograde, remember, be careful not to be too harsh or too dramatic or whatever. This is about trust, okay? It is about trust, it is about surrender and allowing <laughs> allowing things to unfold, okay? And allowing new information to come in as well. All right. Thanks, guys. See you next week. Single Aries. I have to laugh because the relationship Aries people got another Pisces card. So we're getting lots of Pisces with your ruling planet in Pisces. Okay. Yeah. So it's weird. Yeah. So it's weird. It's fine. I know you're feeling like that sexual charge. Like I said before, when I talked about the sexual energy, like I know that that's there. And I know you're like wanting to take it out on someone or like you're really thinking about something in the past. Like this kind of energy can take your mind to all different kinds of places. It's a beautiful energy because you can receive a lot of information. <coughs> Excuse me. A lot of divinely inspired information. Um, but really what it's asking you to do is just sit tight, okay? The energy that you're dealing with is the Six of Wands, which is a card of victory in its most generic sense, right? Success. And you kind of just being the champion of your own life and just saying, screw it, I'm just going to go. I'm going to do my thing. I'm going to be who I am. And I love this for an Aries as well because it is so strong and it is so confident and it is so proud. And that's really where Aries belongs is on that strong, confident path, you know? And so there's an acceptance that it just is what it is. I'm not necessarily seeing someone come in for you this week. But that's fine, you know, maybe you go out and be social, right? Aries love. I got my Aries. They they have kind of a weird, it's like they can be also very introverted as well because um, the Pisces influence there. But, you know, they, when they go out, they have the best time. And they make, I always say this, they always make me laugh, right? So go do your thing. Go make people laugh. Go, you know, have fun and go watch that sporting event, go to the sports book or whatever. You, I'm in Vegas, so the sports book, right? Go do whatever you got to do and just enjoy your life and just let whatever is be. Okay. All right, Aries, I'll see you next week. All right, Taurus, your sexual energy for the week is the four of wands. I know a super sexy card, right? Uh, yes. <laughs> Let's talk about what sex is the product of. It's the product of playfulness and flirtation and, you know, seduction. And there's this whole like dance that happens before sex. Now that your ruling planet is moving back direct, I think you're starting to feel like, oh, I'm kind of wanting to like play that little game and I'm kind of wanting to, and I say the game, right? But like the flirtation game, wanting to be sexy, wanting to be adored, wanting to feel that attention coming to you and also giving that attention to and like seeing where it can take you and kind of this wandering into the unknown, being very playful, very lighthearted, right? There's nothing serious about this card at all. This is just like, I just kind of want to have fun, you know? And um, it can be maybe a little bit of a struggle for some of you to get to that end game, but I think it's also the process of getting there too that will make you feel um, like sexually satisfied. Even if you're not having sex, it's the going to the grocery store and flirting with the supermarket guy or like the, the checkout guy or, you know, I don't even know, whatever. Whatever you guys gotta do, you gotta do that, that hot guy at yoga or something. Um, 
and just allowing the fun to kind of creep in and be like, it's not about the sex, it's about the fun, okay? I love this, I saw this, I was like, oh, this is so great. Because Taurus, Venus, retrograde, oh, you know. But this is fun, this is great for you guys. All right, let's go ahead and move into the relationships. Relationship Taurus, where is your energy? This is amazing. What have you got going on? You clearly got stuff going on. Uh, something's coming for you. I don't know if it's happened already or if it's going to happen or what, but this is like something amazing, right? This is the physical manifestation, which you are so good at. That's your MO. That's your thing, right? The physical manifestation of the internal emotions and thoughts happening in reality. This is, um, it's, it's your kingdom happening here. And I think you have really great things going on in your life, maybe actually in business, maybe actually in, uh, your personal life, your spiritual development, you know? But I think your partner is really like choosing not to see, choosing not to celebrate that stuff with you. They themselves may be projecting jealousy onto you because, oh, look, Taurus, look at, they're doing all this great stuff, but then they feel insecure because maybe they're not matching or something. Maybe this doesn't have anything to do with you. Maybe they have just have their own stuff going on and they are certainly in their headspace. I don't necessarily know that you're going to be able to really break them free from that, right? Because those mental constructs, we have to do that on our own. There's no one person that can do that for us. The energy that's bridging the gap between the two of you is the sun reverse, which kind of is curious um, because it's, uh, when I saw it, when I pulled the cards out, I was prepare, prepping for this um, spread for you guys. I was like, that's false optimism coming through. And I think more so on the part of your partner, right? Because of their sort of cloudiness and their blindfold that they're wearing. False optimism. Maybe there's blind faith. You know, maybe you've got something going on, a new business opportunity, and they're like, I'm really not sure how it's going to go. But then they still kind of delve out that superficial, oh, yeah, you go, babe. Like, yeah, you do it. You know, but on the in the back of my, their mind, they're like, there's no way that's ever going to work. So there's something weird. Um, that you just, you don't need to be aware of. I don't know. I, it's just their own thing. You've got your own thing going on. I think that's really the only thing you need to think about. Your progress, your success, your growth, because it's going to take you to a really beautiful place. The Ace of Coins always does. Okay? All right, you guys. See you next week. Single Taurus. This is so opposite from this. Why is this happening? Uh, this is so playful and so fun, but still a number four, but this is so like detached and cool and just like super chill, which this is a, not a foreign energy for Taurus, right? It's like you want to play, but you don't want to let the person that you want to play and you're just going to kind of sit there and, you know, do your thing. And I think you have this, and this is mature, right? It's not an attachment, certainly not an attachment to this outcome at all. Uh, even though the energy that's coming that you're dealing with is a page of cups. So it's a possibility. Uh, again, the, the page of cups is a little on the superficial level, though, you know, kind of maybe just an introduction with someone. It's like the beginning stages of a connection, most likely. And here you are being very like, OK, well, let's see how this goes. Let's see how this sort of unfolds. Let's see what happens. And I think I don't ugh. I don't, what's, there's nothing wrong with that, I don't think. <laughs> you know, Scorpio still hosting the Venus transit in the next week or so. I don't know. Sorry, I didn't check the dates of when she's going back through Scorpio. But still your opposite sign, you know, um, coming in, in your opposite kind of can cause some stress. So I'm wondering if you're just feeling that need to just play it cool for a little bit just so you can suss out the situation and, you know, make sure that person, you know, but you can use it. Like I said, you don't have to go full on to the end result. You can use that sort of playful flirtation fun to kind of boost your ego a little bit, boost your confidence, make you feel a little bit better. And I think you're going to have an opportunity for that specifically. So, I mean, that's going to be a great, who doesn't love that, you know? <laughs> All right, you guys, I'll see you guys next week. Take care. Okay, Gemini, your sexual component, Seven of Swords. Oh, I feel like you may be over-intellectualizing sex a little bit. 
maybe indulging a little bit too much in a fantasy as well or an internal dialogue or an internal situation you know or you may be feeling a little bit disconnected with your partner if you have one and you know feeling like we're just not vibing man you know we're not like connecting you want something different than what i want and like where are we in this whole situation like where is this going and if you're not with someone, you're like, what do I do with this energy? <laughs> what am I supposed to do? I, I feel so much like I want it and I, and I think about it and maybe it's very much on my mind. But I also know that there's more productive things that I can do, but I find it very hard. Maybe your mind keeps kind of coming back to the sexual component of your life. Um, and it's okay. It is temporary. Yes, Mars is in Pisces, you know. Yes, Mercury retrograde in your opposite sign. I get it. Things are agitated. Things are a little bit irritated right now. Um, so sexually, you may be disconnected, but I think in other ways, you'll find connection and you'll see that through um, through the other readings as well. Okay? So kind of an interesting week. I feel like last week was also kind of interesting too for you guys. So hopefully it will kind of filter through uh, throughout December. All right? See you guys in the other spreads relationship gemini is just like taurus ten of coins wow what have you got going on seriously what have you got going on there's abundance here there's growth here there is um just a feeling of overall satisfaction and fulfillment your partner coming out of the three of cups suggests joy and happiness and also friendships. You guys really may be going out and being quite social this month or this week rather. The energy that's connecting the two of you, the three of coins. Now I know a lot of people are, you know, they always often connect these with the three, you know, third party. Please don't do that. With these readings, this is for like committed relationships. Um, I don't see that with these cards. This is about connectivity. This is about your social networks, your business, you know, your professional networks as well. I'm wondering if you guys are really uh, integrating your professional and social lives, just like living and breathing that which you do for a living. And it's just kind of, it's this all encompassing bringing friends into your work and bringing work into your friends. Like, I don't know, there seems to be this kind of interesting crossing the bridge there. Communication, in spite of Mercury retrograde, seems to be going very well, at least for this week. There's celebratory nature about you. There's a lot to be excited for. So if you're not feeling abundant in your relationship, um, you might want to take a second look. You know, take a second look. Take a second look at yourself. A second look at what your partner is doing and how your partner is behaving uh, in regards to your success or whatever. There's also, sorry, let me just say one more thing. I'm also kind of getting a little bit of a homebody vibe and Mars and Pisces can do that. So you may feel disoriented in that manner as well, where there's a draw to be out with so much social stuff going on. But at the same time, it's like, oh, but I really just want to stay home. Let's just stay home. Let's just be comfortable. Let's watch our shows. Let's do our thing, you know. Um, and I think maybe that's kind of where this sex stuff is kind of lacking a little bit because there's so much of this stuff going on that it doesn't quite make it all the way into the bedroom so you're kind of left just thinking about it you know it's just a little bit too busy okay all right have a good week guys i'll see you next week single gemini's what happened <laughs> What happened? Why is this happening? Uh, two of cups reversed. Did something happen with someone that you were dating? Or do you really just not have anybody and you just feel that such strong, like, oh, I just really want that connection. Um, communication might be a little bit weird. Like if you were trying to go out and date or if you're trying to resurface something from the past, like it can just be really tough right now. It's just not really conducive uh, it's not a conducive environment astrologically for um, new things to really take hold for you. And if you try, then it's probably going to be, you know, 
misunderstood or misinterpreted by the other party. It's just, you know, and the energy you're dealing with is the five of swords reversed. So there's stuff going on up here. Be careful that you're not projecting out all this kind of subconscious stuff that's going on in the background there because you can easily manifest stuff, which I talked about in the weekly bump this week. You can easily manifest, but you have to be careful that you're manifesting responsibly. Um, if you manifest a connection from a place of five of swords, you're going to manifest a problem, you know? And again, that's why this whole thing is like all in your head here, because it's like almost you're afraid to even have sex. You're afraid to even initiate that kind of thing with someone because yes, there is a disconnect going on. You may be feeling disconnected. Like I said, oh, sorry, I said that in the relationship reading, um, but there's going to be this like going out and being social versus wanting to stay home. And I think that when you're out, you're going to want to be home. And when you're home, you're going to want to be out. And so there's this whole push pull with Gemini going on right now. And there's going to be a lot of energy and it's going to be a lot of built up energy. But I don't know that there's going to be the proper outlet for you to really like release that. And so to find a way to channel it through creativity, right? That's the best method, whether it's writing or dancing or sculpting, painting, whatever it is you do to create, that's the best way to channel it because it helps you to, to rise above it. It helps you to disconnect from it, okay? But again, it's only a week-long reading. It's very temporary, so don't stress, okay? All right, you guys, I'll see you next week. Take care. Cancer, your sexual energy is coming out as the king of swords. If you're a guy watching this, I have to actually just kind of laugh a little bit because it's so like with the man fondling the breasts of the woman and, you know, Cancerian men, it's like all about the boobs with them, right? Like it's just so typical. Um, if you're dealing with a Cancer man, you'll be like, oh, interesting, uh, you know, yeah. Um, anyway, so. This is very kind of an interesting card because it encompasses so many different things. There's the playfulness of the fondling. There's the intrigue of what comes next. There's the connection and the love and the bonding that happens here. And, you know, Cancerian is a, you know, like when they have someone in their heart, like they are really in their heart. And sex is kind of like that fun extra thing that you get to do to just make that bond even better. And there's, there's this drive this month, especially with, you know, Mars trining your sign, your Venus or your Mars or any of, of your other planets or positions um, coming out and saying, you know, this shouldn't be, you know, there's no reason to be ashamed or to want this. Like this is going to be a driver for you for the next couple of months, really. The wanting of the fruit, right? Because the planting of the seed and the nurturing of the soil. It's all about taking care of the, the other person and caring for them and nurturing them. And this is kind of the manifestation of the happiness and of the harmony and of the joy. And that's a beautiful thing, especially for a cancer, right? Especially for a cancer. I don't see this as being a, like a kinky, weird card at all. It's very solid. It's very, um, it's very spiritual and it's very real. Okay, so this is a beautiful card for you guys to get for your sexual component. So let's go ahead and move into the other spread. Relationship Cancer. Four of Swords reversed. What's going on up here? A lot going on up here. A lot of thinking. Maybe you're kind of spinning a little bit. Maybe you're feeling the effects of the Mercury retrograde a little bit. I don't know. There's a lot of change in the air right now. And I think maybe you're just kind of thinking about where this is all going. Be careful that you're not trying to, um, be careful that you're not pulling away too much or maybe even like counteracting that not knowing by clinging a little bit too much by your partner who has like this full like autonomous independent thing going on right now. They seem to be like really in their zone doing a lot of things. You know, you may just be feeling like, ah, oh, I need something more going on in my life or I need to make this change or I need to do this thing. And you know, you're, you're just kind of in your head a little bit 
and yet your partner seems to be very stable. Obviously, you can lean on them. They obviously love you. They obviously care about you. They obviously have some resources or knowledge or wisdom that they can impart upon you. So don't be afraid to ask. The energy that's bridging the gap between the two of you is beautiful, two of swords. It's one of balance. It's a Libra energy. It's, an, it's a card that suggests, yes, you might be at a crossroads here. Maybe within your relationship, you're kind of deciding like what to do about something. Maybe there's an issue on the table that you're like okay what do we need to do here um, and yet uh, I feel that you are fully supported in whichever direction that you take the only recommendation that I can make at this point is when your mind is kind of overactive or when you're having a hard time finding stillness that that should be your goal not the decision itself stillness should be the goal because when we restore peace in ourselves and within and therefore again within our relationships um, that's when decisions kind of make themselves for us you know we don't really need to make those decisions they just kind of happen and they just kind of unfold and there they are okay so yes it's weird <laughs> Sexually, I think you're very, you know, you're very much there for each other, which is great. Okay? All right, you guys. I'll see you guys next week. Thanks. Single Cancer is coming out as a powerhouse. Boom. I hear that. So strong. Uh, so with so much conviction and so much like, I know what I stand for. And I have a feeling, single cancers, you've been doing so much introspection. You've been thinking about yourself, your life, your purpose, your path. Da, 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 da. And I think you have also found happiness with being alone, too. Um, because this is not an energy that needs anybody. Like This is a Taurus card, and the energy that's confronting you is... The Leo card. Can we just talk about the independence and the individuality and the self-reliance of both of those signs that kind of are kind of surrounding you a little bit, kind of? And um, two powerhouse cards coming out. So much strength. I know you've taken your spiritual practice to whole new levels. There's no way you couldn't have with these cards. You may be dealing with an issue that is going to test your progress, right? It's going to test your knowledge a little bit, as we see with the lion. Test your ego. How well have you really come in contact with your ego, you know? And in the dating world, this is someone that might find it difficult to kind of get a date because you're so self-possessed. But the good news is, is that when you do find someone, it's going to be someone that matches you on that level. Someone that can give you this connection. Who is self-possessed. Who is strong, independent, autonomous. But also offers the comfort and the consistency as well. I mean, you're kind of setting yourself up for a great deal of success right now, which is great. I wouldn't change anything. I <laughs> just keep going. This is great. Okay? See you guys next week. Leo, your sexual component, same as Aries, coming out as the Ace of Swords. Interesting for a fire sign. There's, I think it was Aries. Doesn't matter. Um, this is a quality of bonding. And also surrender by trusting your partner that once you take yourself out of your self-control, will your partner be there? Can you really trust them, right? I think Leo is really needing that kind of secure state right now. And I think even more so than sex, there's an intellectualized quality with the swords, right? And it's the idea of this kind of a connection that you guys are playing with right now. It's the idea of the feelings, the idea of the emotional exchange, and the idea of the spiritual exchange, too. But I'm wondering, I'm looking at the relationships in single cards, and I'm like, I'm wondering if you guys are, like, really in a place where you're getting that. 
And so that's why you're being so driven to really do that. With Venus going back direct, you know that the drive for connection with one another is very strong. Mars into Pisces now, very strong, very much wanting that kind of fantasy thing. Um, and, and the sexual charge is electric. You know, when Mars changes a sign, he gets highlighted. So, I mean, there's stuff going on. Um, with the sun finishing out in Scorpio and about to enter into Sagittarius too, there's, you know, like, let's get this going. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's move, let's move, let's move. But yet still I'm seeing a little bit of hang up. So interesting, but only a week too at the same time. <laughs> so don't worry about it. Um, yes. So there's your sexual component there. Let's go ahead and move into the relationship reading. Relationship Leos. What is it that you're done? <laughs> This is a great card when someone says, oh, I'm done. Like, I can't, I don't want to do that anymore. Like, this is a cleansing card. Excuse me, when it's reversed. It's you putting down the unnecessary obligations that you just really don't want to deal with anymore. But it does put you in kind of an isolated place because your partner is coming out as this Pisces knight of cups to reverse kind of thing toward you your back toward them you know and i know that you're busy i know you have a lot going on i know there's a lot of energy and there's a lot of ideas kind of floating around right now i think is your partner being a little bit needy right now being a little bit overly dramatic maybe <laughs> maybe they're not being very sympathetic toward you, right? Maybe they're kind of in a taking mode right now, which is making you be like, ugh. And I think maybe even in some reasons why this is an intellectual, an intellectualized energy rather than actual manifestation energy, because it's not really happening because is that attraction really there? You know? The energy that's bridging the gap between the two of you is the two of swords coming out and speaking of finding peace, finding that middle ground, that equilibrium between the two. Clearly the energy is not balanced here. It's too much them toward you. And I don't think you want that. I, you know, I, a, a real mature and a real evolved Leo wants balance it wants reciprocation because it can give so much right being so giving but also needing that as well right there there's certainly that component to leo and i think this week you're gonna have to find a way to find that like okay we need to either stop doing this or stop having this conversation or this behavior needs to end and i just need to like i can't handle everything i can't manage everything we need to find some common ground and I think you do, which is great. There's success in that. And if you trust the process, which I think maybe also too, that's what this card is, is really coming out. Trust your, your partner to do the processing internally and to trust the relationship to evolve, then it will. Okay? All right, Leo. I'll see you next Single Leos, what is going on? I was shocked when I got this. Like, oh, because I have like my Venus and Leo, right? I'm like, hmm, I wonder what this is. And I, I'm, I'm wondering if you're feeling the sexual frustration is really the only thing that I could think of with this card because the energy that came out that you're dealing with is this, like the scarcity of the relationship. Look, if you've been working on manifesting a relationship or manifesting a connection or whatever, uh, and it's not happening, don't stress. You know, that's this energy of surrender can be rechanneled or transmuted into energy, like creative energy for one, always, always creative energy. Um, but also toward productive things that kind of help get your mind off of this. There's no reason for the Nine of Swords to be coming out at all you know um this is you maybe feeding insecurities about yourself and it doesn't need to be that way because the more you feed your insecurities the more i see the five of swords is excuse me the five of coins is the physical manifestation of the nine of swords thoughts it's the confirmation that yes your insecurities are in fact true Yes, the things you don't like about yourself are in fact true. 
That's not true. We need to stop feeding the things that are not true. Because we're going to manifest a person who confirms all the insecurity. It's just, the uh, let's just not do that. Okay, so this is a week for you to really focus on the nine of swords or the swords in your back. The things that are killing you, the thoughts that are killing you, all the negative belief systems that you have about yourself and your worthiness or whatever, um, to really harness those and say no. And to find a way to really put a stop to that, okay? Surrender to the process. All right, Leo. Have a good week. I'll see you next week. Take care. Virgo, <laughs> your sexual energy is so beautiful. Before I show you the card, I'm going to read the description of the book, okay? The eye is the mirror of the soul and creates with the magic of thought. If partners suggest happy images to each other, the couple reaches a state of union and lasting splendor. I uh, just thought I was like, I had to read that because it was just worded so beautifully and you get the sun. Projecting happy images, projecting a happy self and looking at the relationship in the, the single reading right now, uh, Virgo, you specifically are coming out like a powerhouse of amazing stuff um, and you projecting this self image of like I I'm living up to my true value I know what my true value is your partner is gonna see that and I know that you singled out there you want that right but you're creating it within your relationships you're creating this bond alchemically you guys are doing it it's in process and I think if you were to connect with someone sexually this week, your heart would be so full and it would be so overwhelmed with joy and gratitude and the sexual experience will be, you know, kind of like really off the charts, hopefully, um, physically, spiritually, emotionally, and intellectually, where all four of these kind of components really come together and you sort of transcend time and space and you really understand the true essence of what sex actually is, right? Which is a union of energetic beings, you know? So, wow, this is the first time this card has come out since I've purchased this deck. So yes, super excited about that. See you in the next reading. All right, you kick ass. Relationship Virgos coming out of the Nine of Cups. What did I say, right? Feeling so proud and so honored to have lived the life that you have lived and to have had the experiences that you have had. I always say this is our emotional trophy case, right? Like, look at, look at my life. Look at everything that I've done. Let me show you. Let me talk about it. This is the value that I bring to the world. My experience is then in turn my contribution. You know, but your partner is acting strange, I suspect, and it can be in light of in a way, like when I saw, saw these cards come out, I was like, they're running away. Like, they're not running away. They are skeptical of this new version of you. And they're like, wait, this person's changing. But they're very attracted to you. Like, he's still looking at you, you know. Very attracted to you, but intrigued more than anything. There's a curiosity there. They are breaking free from their own stuff. And I think you have led by example, it seems, apparently, you have led by example that you can find pride in breaking free from toxic belief systems or your past experiences or whatever was holding you back before. It is the liberation from those things that gives you the power. You know, and I think your partner is watching you do that and they're being like, oh, wow, like it can be done. And there is a very real attraction there. The energy that's bridging the gap between the two of you, however, is, well, not however, but nine of wands reversed. Now, when the nine of wands is reversed, I always see it as the breakdown of the barrier, which in turn complements the connection of the sun. When we let our barriers down and we project these beautiful images of ourselves into the eyes of the other person, they start to see those 
beautiful images and they start to see you as those beautiful images because Mars is in Pisces and Pisces is relevant because it's your opposite because Mars is that over there um, and it Pisces just being in such this fanciful kind of quality and being so much like up here right it's not here it's not here it's not down here in our gut it's like out there in the cosmos I think that your connection will take on that very cosmic essence when you break down those barriers there. And that's what's happening, you know? Be compassionate toward your partner. They're trying to figure it out. You know, be compassionate. All right, you guys, see you next week. Single Virgos. I take pride of this too as a single Virgo. Uh, the Empress, <laughs> so powerful. And like, look, I don't know what you guys are doing out there. I don't know what work you've been doing uh, intellectually and spiritually and in terms of, you know, really raising those vibrate. I don't know what you've been doing, but it's working. And the world is starting to really shift the way they see you. You're starting to shift the way you see yourself. You're learning about yourself, probably through the eyes of p other people as well. And I know you want this more than any, like there is no person in the entire Zodiac that doesn't want this because this is the absolute most spiritual sexual quality that we could attain here in this experience. All right. This is liberating sex. Okay, there's no attachment here. There's nothing negative here. It's all 100% positive and full of true and unconditional love. And what are you doing? You are alchemizing it. <laughs> You're creating it. You're creating it by creating yourself. And I see nothing but success in this line of progress that you've been taking. And, you know, I even actually, when I work on my manifestation techniques, I actually look at the magician card as kind of like a, a guide. He is the alchemist and he is the messenger as well, right? There's a mercur mercurial component. I know that Mercury being retrograde here is powerful because of the connection with Neptune and Mars being in, in a Neptune ruled sign. And, you know, Mercury being the messenger from you and the other realms and you have direct access to him right now. Direct access, he's available 100% to you in a very creative and a very distinctive way. And so if you're wanting to manifest this, you can. No doubt in my mind. An empress knows how to do that. She knows how to use that power. She knows how to use the masculine, you know, that's what the, the magician really is. Very masculine energy. Send it. Tell it what to do and it will do that. Good for you guys. Good for you guys. All right. That's it. <laughs> Nothing else more to say. I'll see you guys next week. Libra, your sexual component coming out quite interesting is the two of pentacles here. You see how the guy is kind of like creeping up on the girl? This suggests some kind of insecurity, some kind of embarrassment almost, uh, maybe an intimidation as well. These are hurdles that need to be overcome in order to enjoy the sexual experience. And the energy is weird with you guys right now. I'm not quite sure. I just did an amazing reading for, for Virgo, so I'm not sure. Leo and Libra, both kind of surrounding Virgo, come coming off a little bit strange. And I don't know why this is kind of creeping up. Maybe it's the Mercury retrograde. Maybe it's like this anticipation of like, okay, I know that the universe is calling me up to do big things. And I'm still kind of getting over my feeling of deserving something maybe. Um, and being afraid, you know, being, you know, working up that courage to ask be working up that courage to be like, yes, I'm a sexual person and I really just want to have an amazing sexual experience right now. The desire is still there. There's still, you know, the libido is still surging through you. Yes, of course it is. 
Um, you're still feeling like you want to share and be open with someone. But I think you're also all in your own head, too. And it's kind of getting in your own way. So, you know, in relationships, like uh, in singles, you're like, oh, maybe I'll just stay single a little bit while longer until I feel ready. But I think you are ready. I think you are ready to open yourself up and to share that beautiful experience with someone. It's just a matter of getting over those initial obstacles. Okay, so let's move on into the relationship and single spreads. Relationship Libra, beautiful, coming off abundant. What did I say in the sex reading, right? Abundant, full of resources, full of so much to share. I think you do. I think you have so much to share. You have so much to give. And there's, I think, reciprocation because your partner is coming out as the queen of pentacles. Your partner is... Maybe focus on their own thing, though, you know, like you've got 10, but they've got one and they're looking down a little bit like there's still energetic reciprocation, but still there's a breakdown somewhere going on, which is indicated with the Knight of Cups reversed. Are they not pursuing you? Are they not coming to you? Are they... Are they the ones that are kind of embarrassed? You know, maybe you're kind of putting out all the signals like, hey, babe, I kind of want to get some love in tonight. And they're just kind of like, um, yeah, I'm too focused on my thing, you know. Um, the Knight of Cups can also be, you know, in a negative manifested way, a little bit too much in the fantasy. I don't see how the fantasy and all these coins kind of jive too much practicality, maybe a little bit too much fantasy. And there's just this living in the fantasy with the, the connection realm, but also practically in the real world, being a little bit too focused on your own things. Uh, the only recommend, I mean, it's Mercury retrograde, right? <laughs> Venus is now going back direct, but she's still going to be going back through Scorpio. So, you know, I mean, the energy is interesting. It's a little bit finicky whenever Mercury goes retrograde because it's just a little bit, nah, could change on a whim. You know, he likes to play little games or whatever. So honesty and authenticity is really the only way to really bridge this gap here. And if you're really feeling like you, you're needing that connection to communicate that that's what you need, I have a feeling that your partner will be very like, oh, snap out of it and be like, oh, okay, well, that's fine. I'll put this project aside and like, let's go have some fun, right? Um, I think they'll be very amenable to that and they'll be willing to bridge the gap. But I also don't know that they're the most like aggressive right now either. They're not just going to like push you against the wall and, you know, do that whole thing, um, which is might be something that you're wanting, but afraid to ask for. Okay. All right, Libra. Just a week. I'll see you guys next week. Single Libras, what are you doing? Six of Swords reverse. What are you doing? What are you thinking about? What's going on upstairs? I feel like you have... I think you're doing your indecisive thing because the energy that's coming out in front of you is the Seven of Coins reversed. Seven of Coins usually is like, okay, there's something in my life that I'm somewhat dissatisfied with and I want to change. And I'm going to pivot. I'm going to change my timeline. I'm going to change the course of my direction. But you seem to be not acknowledging that or I don't know. I don't necessarily I'm not going to call it denial because I don't think it's denial. I think it's just maybe you're like, I'm not ready to make that decision yet. And in a relationship context or being single and wanting a connection context, you might be sending out some mixed signals to the universe, right? Like one day you're like, OK, I know I want this connection. I know I want this partnership. But then the next day, like, no, I still need to focus on me. And so it's kind of this toggle effect on, off, on, off, on, off. And the universe is like short circuiting, like, I don't know what to do here. So if you're really just not feeling ready for a relationship, that's fine. Um, 
if you're really just not sure what you want, that's also fine because the universe will provide those answers for you if you let the universe. I think there's an element of surrender here too, which is always, but um, a recommendation that now might be a good time to just like, let's see what happens. You know, maybe get off the dating things for a little while. Um, put away your phone, stop comparing yourself to other girls on social media or other guys on social media, and, and just like really hone in to your true essence. And if there are insecurities within you, um, this even kind of like that guy creeping up on the girl, like that's the universe back there. Like, do I do it? Do I not? Do I do it? Do I not? Libra, you're sending out mixed messages. So if you feel like you want something and that's what you want to manifest, then put it out there and manifest it and do it confidently and aggressively and then that's it don't do that and then the next day be like oh no never mind <laughs> you know kind of thing um, be sure be confident if you want it you want it and it's okay all right all right see you guys next week take care scorpio what kind of magic are you doing, the moon? <laughs> what kind of magic are you doing? You know what's so beautiful is this Venus transit again through your sign is going to be trining with Mars and Pisces. And I think all the water signs are really going to be feeling the effects of that in a, like a really magical kind of way. This is a projection of happy images and of quality sexual connections. And whether you're having sex or not, I do feel like you're going to be manifesting some really amazing stuff. Now, I've been talking a lot about manifestation because that's really coming online with the stars, especially with Neptune and Mercury being involved, Jupiter and Sagittarius, the sun coming into Sagittarius. I mean, it's really time for all of this stuff to be coming up for us. Your season was so internalized, but now it's like, oh, let's release that intensity. And in the love and sex department, you're probably gonna really be starting to enjoy yourself a little bit, I think, I hope, um, because this is the work that you've been doing. And this is the, hey, universe, I want this love, I want this deep, meaningful, quality connection, but I also want the raw and intense, like, oh, I've gotta have you kind of sex, like, can I have it all? And the universe is like, sure. Sure, yeah, you can have it all, why not? Like I created the universe, why can't I create that for you? There's no request too big. So if you haven't been working on your, you know, your manifestation stuff, I, I recommend that you begin. Um, just make sure, and I'm going to say this, make sure you're manifesting in a responsible state of mind, which is one from positivity, true, genuine intent, and to not put anything into a box, right? I talked about this in my weekly bump, and I think it's applicable to you right now, to not put anything into a box and to not say, like, I want this person, or I want it by this time, or, you know, just manifest the feeling, manifest the emotion, manifest the quality, because right now, that power is really strong and you're gonna be feeling it. Um, you're gonna be feeling it with the Mars trine, okay? All right, Scorpio. I love talking about sex with the sign of sex. <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> All right, you guys, see you in the next. Relationship Scorpios, Six of Cups. This is good for a Scorpio. You know, I was, as a Scorpio moon, let me just tell you a little personal story. Like I was walking, um, out of my Bikram yoga class, I never really noticed, there's the RTC right there, and I never really noticed the building. And there was this whole section for like the mobility center, right? For people that are disabled or for the elderly to be able to take them to like the grocery store or whatever. And I actually had this very emotional moment and I started kind of crying, tearing up a little bit, like because of that whole sense of caring of humanity, right? Like, oh my God, we really do take care of each other. Like sometimes I forget that we really do take care of each other. And I, and I think that there's kind of this overwhelming feeling going on with the Six of Cups too. Um, Pisces, Mars being all about like, oh, everything, you know, is so big, you know. And I think you're going to be feeling that really strong and really hot and heavy. And you're going to be in this very emotional place, but it's a beautiful emotional place. It's not a negative one at all. 
It's one of gratitude and compassion. And it's one of like, what can I give you? How can I help? And, you know, I think your partner is going to need help and they're probably not going to tell you the energy bridging the gap is the Knight of Cups reversed. Um, they're just kind of in their mind and you're kind of in your heart, which like, of course. <laughs> um, and, I, and I have a feeling that they are not connecting very much with themselves spiritually right now. They're not taking the time that they really need in order to kind of like settle themselves. I think they're feeling a little frustrated with the current astrological environment. And obviously they're probably not as aware as you are. The Knight of Cups bridging the gap here suggests I think that that kind of unwillingness to ask, that unwillingness to approach also making the sexual experience maybe a little bit difficult to actually happen within the relationship. That's why it's the moon state rather than the sun state. It hasn't quite surfaced yet. It's like that, <laughs> that pimple, you know it's coming, you can feel it down there, but you can't do anything about it, right? That's kind of where you're at. And if you want to bridge the gap, you're going to have to make the effort and you're going to have to get out of your whole like isolated Scorpio intensity thing. And you're going to have to say, okay, hey, you know, is there anything I can do to help? And I think you actually have some gems of knowledge and, and spiritual downloads, whatever, that actually can help. As long as it's from a soft place, as long as it's not too harsh, as long as it's kind-hearted and genuine, which there's a very genuine energy coming through with this, okay? But, um, yeah, that's it. I mean, it's beautiful. All right, there you go. See you guys next week. Single Scorpios, you seem to be on a mission, yeah? Fighting for something. You have your mind set and there is no changing your mind. <laughs> um, you may feel like the dating world is just a little bit not your vibe right now. You know, it's kind of that you... Oh. <laughs> uh, like I've been there, you know, I've totally been there. That state of mind where just everyone kind of is dating this, uh, dating the same person, or you're blah, you're constantly dating the same person, and your friends and your family are like, why aren't you dating anybody? Why aren't you on Tinder or Bumble or this app? Or it was like all five five million new apps every day. It seems like always asking you, and you're just like, man, I'm just trying to get my life together. You know, I'm just trying to go out there and be awesome and to really tap into my power. The energy that's um, that you're dealing with is the Queen of Coins, your own Queen of Coins your own queen of manifestation. And I think you're playing with that magic. This is a card of magic. You're playing with the magic a little bit. Now I call it magic. Some people call it alchemy. People call it law of attraction. People call it manifestation, whatever you want to call it. It's interesting actually how the moon looks a lot like the coin and it's in your hands, you know? in your hands you're playing with it you're molding it it's kind of like that energy ball you know like when you get the chi going and you can feel that resistance i can feel it right now you can feel that resistance going as you kind of play and it's malleable that's what you're doing and in a relationship sense you're manifesting the best the best of what a scorpio can can handle which is a lot right <laughs> the best of the best so keep going. Just don't let anyone tell you what to do. You're on a good track. You're doing the right thing for yourself. Super on point. Really intelligent. I don't see any, any roadblocks here at all. Okay? All right. Take care, you guys. Sagittarius. What's going on with you guys? This is very curious. I think the Mercury retrograde is affecting your confidence. Jupiter comes in, but boom, Mercury retrograde. You kind of 
pull into your shell a little bit. This is Nine of Wands. And this is a beautiful card. I mean, just look at the image. It's lovely. It is sharing. It is caressing. And it's not the full-on act of sex, right? It's kind of the beginning stages. But when you read the description in the book, it talks about doubt and needing to just overcome those doubts and, and, and to just power through and deal with it right away. Otherwise, it's just going to continue on and on. So if you are, in fact, dealing with any kind of doubt, like, does this person want me or do I, am I going to find a person? Am I going to find a relationship or love or whatever? That needs to be addressed immediately because you're hindering your ability to actually have that thing that you want and that you also deserve. Now, there's softness to this card as well. And I, I wonder if you aren't feeling like you really want that nurturing, like feeling of coming home to someone more than anything. And any sexual activity, there could be something going on behind your mind that's like, well, you know, was it special? Did it really mean anything? And I don't know that Sagittarius is really going to be feeling um, really great about casual sex this week or maybe for the next few weeks. Not going to be feeling really great about disconnected sex. It's going to be like, you know what, let's let's be more tender. Let's be more loving. Let's be more, I mean, we can still like have a good time, but let's take it to that next level, right? To the next dimension. Let's let's time travel, if you will. Let's let's do it with some astral projections while we're doing this too, you know, kind of thing. Um, but really beautiful for you. I mean, it's a wand energy. It is sexual. It is a Sagittarius card, nine of wands, right? Eight, nine, and ten are associated with the mutables of their suit. So there you go. So um, so yeah, there you go. Thank you guys so much. See you next week. So you remember what I said in the sexual reading about doubt? You're not coming in real strong, you know? You're kind of um, being, I mean, you're grounded, which I think is great. And I think the Mercury retrograde, you know, we just kind of came out of a whirlwind with the Venus stuff. And it, we're just poised, you know, November, December is really just going to be about waiting to see how things unfold and not getting too overly ambitious or too overly like, oh, everything is possible. Like that optimism is coming and it's building, but we're also coming from it, coming to that point of really high optimism from a true sense of humility. We've all been very humbled recently. And um, it's kind of a, a disconnect a little bit from where your partner is coming, which is like, whoa, everything is so like, okay, now I feel better. Now I feel great. Now I have ambition. Now let's go and do these dreams. And not to be like, this is so not Sagittarius, right? So completely against your archetype is a little bit of a Debbie Downer. The energy that's protect or connecting the two of you is the Four of Cups. And I think that's just coming from like, well, can we just like not forget what just happened and like, let's not repeat ourselves and let's not get too cocky or too, you know, arrogant and, you know, just accept the universe really does have an influence on our lives, <laughs> you know, and on, on our egos and all of that. And so there's this very cool energy, but also very mature at the same time. Your partner may really be kind of leading in a certain way. I'm not saying don't dream. I'm not saying to be pessimistic or anything. Um, but I am saying to just, you know, to just recognize that things are weird with the Mercury retrograde against Neptune and Mars coming into Pisces for the next couple of months and he'll be crossing over Neptune, which is like pff, everything you think is real is not real, you know, kind of thing. So just be prepared for that and you can still take action. You can still make things happen. You can still open doors for yourself um, and you can still support your partner, of course, but to be mature about it and to not get emotionally attached to any outcome at all. Enjoy the process. Okay. All right, you guys, see you next week. Single Sagittarius, 10 of swords. Why? Why 10 of swords? What did you go through? I just said the same thing for the relationships, 10 of cups reversed. What did you guys just go through that is causing you so much caution? 
and so much doubt. Are you tired? Maybe the energy you're dealing with, is this you? Is this another person? Is this you seeing yourself mirrored in another person? Yes. <laughs> you know, a king of wands reversed has a lot of insecurities. The good news is, is the ten of swords suggests that you're putting an end to that. Again, we were humbled, just like I said in the relationship reading. We were humbled. Yes, we were. All of us, the entire zodiac, went through a lot. We had to come in contact with the true essence of who we are, the true essence of the power of energy, of the energy at play, of the energy that we have no control over. And you learned, we all learned the hard way. And I think right now you have an excellent platform for a whole new beginning. Be careful that you're not allowing your fear to dream. Your fear stop you from dreaming big. You can still dream big, but you don't need to get emotionally attached to any specific outcome because you're still kind of reeling from this. I mean, how could you not be? And in terms of a romantic context, right? I mean, if you were to manifest someone in this current state, I think that there would be a lot of like holding back and a lot of protection because you don't want to go through that again. You know, you don't want to go through that again. You don't want to deal with that. You don't want to have that same situation happen. So now moving forward, you're like, okay, well, I can still look for partners. I can still look for someone special or whatever it is you're wanting. But I'm going to be more selective this time. You know, I'm going to really listen. Now I know how to listen because I think I knew it the whole time back then and I didn't listen and look what happened, you know, or whatever. So, I mean, this is an empowered state. This is a state of humility and this is where our power really comes from. When we put our ego on the back burner and when we, we you know, learn the lessons that we were supposed to learn, the lessons that unfolded because that's what we needed. Okay. All right, you guys, here you go. I'll see you guys next week. Take care. Okay, Capricorn, your sexual energy coming out is the Empress. So beautiful. I have to tell you, as a collective, this whole like awakening is happening. And it's about manifestation. I talked about it in my weekly bump and I'm seeing it like over the past five days, I'm like everything I see on social media is like manifestation, 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 everything. This is a collective thing that's happening. You are particularly fortunate in this area because that is what you do. <laughs> More so I'd say like Capricorn and Taurus are excellent manifestors. You being willing to put in the work and to do the due diligence and to do the dirty work needed and see yet the Empress comes out and she's a very Taurus quality, right? And she says, you know what? You don't have to work that hard, Capricorn. Just put it into thought and it will become a reality in some way, shape or form. If you want a sexual connection, it will happen. If you are feeling a little bit dry in your relationships, maybe you're kind of going through a dry spell, don't worry, it's almost over. She is fertile, right? First of all, fertile. Um, if you guys, you know, don't want to get pregnant, don't get, you know, don't get pregnant, okay? You're playing, you know, let's stop the disassociation between sex and pregnancy, right? That needs to stop, like, immediately. They are one and of the same, the creation of life and the process through which we create life, okay? You don't have to, but, you know, fertility is online for you guys, so just FYI, okay? So, uh, yeah, but if you want to manifest that sexual connection, you are 100% within your right to do so. You're 100% within your power to do so. And there's no doubt in my mind that you are feeling the surge of sexual energy as Mars moves into a new sign and feeling that kind of rush of like, ooh, Mars just moved. 
oh, my libido is kind of like, oh, it's been in the Aquarius for six months and like, oh, there's a change there. So yeah, we are kind of stepping up into that awakening, okay? So, or we're stepping into that, you know, awakened libido, let's say that, okay? It's great. Go out and get it, guys. Go out and get it. It can be yours. Even though you may be dealing with some stuff, we'll talk about it. Capricorn relationships or relationship Capricorns, if I can say it right. <laughs> Your energy coming out is the Four of Cups. Really detached. Why? What's going on? Are you just feeling the shift? Feeling like you just need to play it safe, play it cool? I'm going to get it. You know, a lot of 12th house activity going on for you Capricorn ascendants out there. Um, Sagittarius is always a, an important sign for Capricorn energy no matter what because it's just the sign right before. So it's very much a part of it. And you're feeling the shifts, you're feeling the changes. I think maybe you're feeling the weirdness. I'm also like really concerned about what your partner is doing. Um, I don't know that they're going to be handling the shifts very well. They may be actually acting quite immature. I always see a king of a queen of wands, excuse me, reverse as being a little bit of a more immature energy, a little bit more impulsive, a little bit more childlike, a little bit more dramatic. And even maybe even a little bit more jealous too. And there's just kind of a weird, like they're not handling whatever the situation is. They're not handling it very well. And I, I have a feeling that they are looking at you for answers, but in a way you're not really trying to get involved. I don't know that you can really help. The energy that's bridging the gap between the two of you is the seven of coins reverse, meaning are you dissatisfied with this, right? That's why this Empress energy actually is quite important for you because this says, Capricorn, if you want it, you can have it. But the Four of Cups is coming out and saying, well, do I want it? You know, <laughs> do I want it? Like that really being sure that if you're going to put effort into something, you're going to make sure that that's the thing you actually want. And I'm wondering if you're questioning that. Is this what you really want? Is this relationship really what you want? Is this situation, is, is this satisfying you? Be careful that you're not, you know, over dreaming here because with the Mars in Pisces, there's a very dreamlike state as we all know, and it can be very deceptive and all of this. So if you're feeling on the fence about something, if you're not sure of really how to handle this, because there is a level of indecision here, like, okay, well, what to do? I know I need to do something, but what to do? Um, now is not a good time to make a decision. I highly recommend we wait until Venus comes out of Scorpio and Mercury starts going back direct because things will be more um, whole, like the picture will be more whole and we'll be able to see more clearly. I think we still have lessons with Venus going through Scorpio. There's still things for us to learn. She's not done yet, okay? So that's it, all right? It's only a week. It's not a big deal. It's only a week. Um, let's go ahead and move on into the singles. What's going on? What's happening? Why is this happening? Oh my God, you guys, um, there's no reason to be f afraid. Are you, what are you afraid of? Your own power? Are you afraid of getting hurt again? Is that what's happening? The energy you're dealing with, Three of Swords? Are you afraid of getting hurt again? Are you afraid of disappointment? Are you afraid of, in, you know, of going through it all over again? When your heart is closed, or if you're feeling like your heart is like some pin cushion and people keep pushing pins in it over and over and over, uh, it's very difficult to tap into the Empress energy. But you have to know that she is, first of all, she's a trump card, right? She trumps these other two, means she beats it, she wins. And the only thing that's keeping you here is your own mind, which these represent our thoughts. You know, it's time for everyone. I actually, weirdly, this always happens. I'll put something on Facebook, on Instagram, and then I'll have like a card situation like this that reminds me of it. So I just put it on um, my Instagram. It's like, it's all time for us to crawl out of our coffin of comfort. 
And I think that might apply to you to crawl out of your coffin of comfort because it is what is stifling your potential. She knows what her potential is, especially in the realm of love. And we all know what a Capricorn is capable of giving in a romantic relationship. So, I mean, one of the most committed and traditional signs that there could be. So, you know, the only thing that's stopping you here is, is you and hanging on to any past pain that is past. No longer exists. You can still feel it, but it also continues to get worse the more you feed it. I'm not trying to say suppress or to ignore, but to also not let it control you. Because I think what you have to give to the world and what you have to give to a romantic partner is off the charts. And I don't want to see you limiting yourself in any way, shape or form. It's time for Capricorn to really set themselves free, especially if you want to prepare for this Pluto-Saturn thing going on in 2020, right? Let's set ourselves to free right now. Let's do that now, mentally. Let's ascend. Let's get out of this whole third dimensional situation here and rise above. Be the Empress, okay? All right, you guys. I'll see you next week. Take care. Hello Aquarius, welcome to your sex reading, or your sexual energy reading rather. The card that's coming out for you is the Knave of Pentacles, or like the Page of Pentacles. This is a card of arousal, and that kind of initial like sexual charge, like seeing someone you're attracted to and being like, oh my god, like, oh, and really feeling that attraction. And um, yet there's not an actual satisfaction of desire here. It's purely the arousal part. Uh, I don't necessarily see fear here. It might just be a lack of opportunity. I don't see insecurity here at all. It's just you're feeling the shift of Mars. You're feeling the change of Jupiter. I, I think we all are. There's, um, there is sexual electricity going on within all the signs, within all the zodiac. I, and I don't know how many people are actually acting on it. Mars and Pisces gets weird. You know, it's not the most physical, <laughs> it's like the least physical, uh, you know, physical sign. So, you know, there's um, a component to the arousal itself and that shift in libido, that shift in that whole like whew, feeling that coming into you. But then also like, where do you direct this? You know, if you're in a, in a romantic relationship, we'll talk about it in a minute, single or connected, I don't know. I don't know that there's gonna be a huge like opportunity there for you. So you may just need to be like, okay, I'm feeling this sexual charge. Now, where do I put it? And we always say, something creative. Can I just blanket statement that? Um, I'm going to do a video about that. I think someone had mentioned that. Like, how do you re-channel or transmute sexual energy? But for the most basic sense for this little reading of mine, creative pursuits. Okay, there you go. See you in the next break. Aquarius who are in relationships, your energy is coming out as the moon. I think this is why I said in the sex reading, like, I just don't know if the sex is really going to be happening. It's all very iffy right now. I think your future is somewhat undetermined. And right now you're just sort of taking it one day at a time, allowing the magic of the energy, the magic of the universe to really just do its business. And letting the dust settle. I don't know that you're taking a huge amount of control of your life right now. You're just kind of being like, okay, that was weird. Whatever just happened, happened. And that was weird. I'm trying to process this. I'm trying to deal with it. I don't really know, but let's just continue on. Like, I'm sure it'll be okay. You know, and there's just this utmost faith in the process, which is great. Now your partner is in full-blown manifestation mode, full-blown magician mode, feeling very inspired, feeling very connected, feeling very like in their zone. And I think that's great, but I'm also seeing a disconnect in terms of the energy that's connecting you or that's bridging the gap there. Three major arcana, but the, the energy connecting you is reversed, meaning 
where is this all going? Where is this all going? Where is this all taking us? Also not the most sexual reading either, which is why I think this is just the energy. Like we're all feeling like, wow, okay, I'm, I'm really wanting that sex, that sex. I'm really wanting that connection, but also having a challenge getting it. Um, the magician might be a little bit more aggressive. You know, your partner may be like, oh yeah, babe, let's go. Let's go have fun. But the, ju the judgment reverse suggests that you're either not seeing eye to eye on something, something's not really connecting, something's not really illuminated. I'm wondering if you're kind of the one maybe holding something back or holding back some kind of a project. Um, whereas they're just full on ahead. So you're just operating on some kind of different pace right now. You may have something weird happen to you if something weird hasn't happened to you already with that moon. You know, there's a little bit of a, they always say a deceptive or a delusional quality. Sometimes it could be just someone coming in and sabotaging you in some way. And you're like, where the heck did that come from? I don't even know. Like, I barely even know that person. How did they even get so wrapped up in whatever it was that they were thinking or doing that they didn't even talk to me about it first? And then something manifests that's just awkward and you're like, uh, yeah, okay, okay. I'll, all right, we'll just let that situation set and then we'll just, let's just maybe pretend like it didn't happen and move forward or whatever, right? Um, so there's that kind of component there. I think that's it. I think that's good. I don't really know what else to say. It's just an interesting week and it is only a week, guys. So there's no stress. All right. Thank you so much. Take care. I'll Aquarius singles. I feel like you're thinking about something and something is not settling very well. Um, there's a lot of thought, maybe a really hard time hearing your intuition. You're just kind of maybe in this go with the flow kind of mode, but it's not like the good kind of go with the flow. It's like, I'm just going to maybe act on the first thing that kind of comes to my mind. You know, there's just maybe a little bit too much mental activity. It's not negative. It's not like a nine of swords by any means, um, but it's just very active in a time when it is advisable to be still. Okay. And the reason why I say that is because you have the five of cups coming out as the energy that you're dealing with. So what happened? Something happened. Something happened. Something happened that was weird and it's preventing you. See, even like with this, like I said, it's like the arousal, but it's not necessarily getting to the finish line. It's not necessarily getting all the way. So like, you're feeling the sexual charge, but why aren't you acting on that? Or why aren't you trying to find someone, you know? Um, five of Cups, there's some sadness about something that happened, maybe regret. Maybe you are learning something or in the process of learning something about yourself. Maybe the lesson was hard or maybe it was harsh. And maybe you just had to like, accept it. I don't know. Five of cups is tough, guys. And I feel like there's this very significant pull to look at the three of cups, like look at it. I don't know why I'm feeling that. I never feel that with that card ever. It's always like, look at the two behind you. No, like look at it. What does it mean? That's why you need the stillness to discover the meaning because it's going to put you on a new timeline in your life. It's going to put you on a new trajectory and in your dating life, this is a blockage. This is not a good place to be manifesting a relationship. So it's like sexual arousal aside, you need to look at those three cups and figure out how to avoid that situation in the future you know, and what you need to do to make sure that that doesn't, you know, become a problem again. 
So kind of an interesting reading. I, I wasn't expecting anything less. It's just a just an interesting time. And with Venus going to be making her way back through Scorpio again, we're still not done with all those lessons, guys. You know, Jupiter is kind of getting a slow start a little bit in Sagittarius with some of the other stuff going on. It's like, yes, there's really good things to be expected in 2019, but we need to still prepare for that good stuff. And the way we prepare for that good stuff is by looking and by healing, okay? Sorry, you guys, talk to you soon. Hello, Pisces. Your sexual energy that's coming out is a three of swords. Kind of means the same thing in this deck as it means in the regular deck. There's a need for you to really decide if this is working. Now, if you're not having sex, this might not really apply to you. Sorry, guys. But there is still like, I know that you know what you want. And sometimes you need to just say, this is not what I want. And the reason why it's not what you want is, you know, this, 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 and this. And sometimes, you know, we need to accept that seasons change. You know, you can't stop the leaves from turning brown and falling to the floor or to the ground, right? That's the way the seasons of life evolve. And I'm wondering if a season of your life is turning over in a prominent way. And this Mars thing going on in your sign, training with Venus as she's going to be making her way back again through Scorpio. Um, you know, that's not anything to, you know, she's not, he's, she's not in Scorpio right now. She's still in Libra. But, you know, that's going to be an interesting time. When Mars comes into your sign, it really takes your life to new levels. It takes you in new directions. You're feeling an energetic kind of like, oh, you know, power and aggression. And, and yes, Pisces is all up in here, but you being a Pisces or having Pisces influence in your chart, it's going to charge you. It's going to give you energy. It's going to give you um, the, the wherewithal and the perseverance and the focus to be able to say, that's where I'm going and then to actually go there. You know, and if sexually you're feeling dissatisfied, there might need to be a change that's made. This doesn't have to be the end of a relationship, although for some of you it could be. It doesn't have to be. It could just be the end of something within the relationship. Okay, so it's sexual. Yes, obviously, this whole deck is sexual, but also it's about truth and authenticity and really saying, okay, well, what's working and what's not? And let's get rid of the stuff that's not working. Okay. All right, Pisces, let's move on. Relationship, Pisces. This is where you are, and this is where your partner is. I feel like you are banging your head against the wall trying to get something from your partner. Are they being selfish right now? Are they being a little narcissistic maybe? Are they being foolish, silly? Are they doing something on purpose? You know, hopefully not. This could also be them just being in their own world and being a little bit disconnected. And I think there's just stuff going on inside of you. Mars coming in and really disrupting that kind of peaceful Christ consciousness place that you guys come from. Uh, disrupting it and setting it on fire and you being like, whoa, what's happening? And there's stuff still inside that can be manifesting outside as well. Now, the good news is, is that the energy that's bridging the gap is the Eight of Wands. Now, notice that the wands are traveling from you to your partner. So that means communication needs to come from you. And it needs to be organized, right? We can see how disorganized these wands are versus how organized these wands are. Organized thought, organized imagery. And, you know, sometimes I know water signs really need to process what they're feeling in order to convert it into words so that they can then articulate it in a comp comprehensible manner to their partners. I do that too as a Scorpio moon. It's like, wow, I really need to like think this through first before it's going to be intelligible to anybody else. You might need to do that, especially if your partner is like kind of behaving kind of like a, you know, kind of a jerk maybe, or again, being a little bit more, well, 
I'm going to do my thing and you can just go do your thing or whatever. Plus the coin quality is very practical. So you have to come down to that level. This is not a passionate person. This is not someone that's really willing to raise their voice. Not someone that's willing to like get into it with anybody. This is someone that like, if you've got a problem with me, you just got to freaking come tell me. They can be a dick about it too. Sorry. They can be kind of like that. Yeah. Um, but I think ultimately, if you can find a way to intelligently communicate the problem, then it will be resolved. Okay. There is the like that's the whole ending of the kind of stress. I mean, it's a happy ending. And so that's why this, I think, right? The end of something in the relationship. And I think that it's it's great because you're resolving it. And I know Mercury retrograde is weird. So that's even more important for you to be more articulate, okay? To be more articulate and to actually bridge the gap physically, right? Maybe by going to, over to their place or by coming and sitting next to them on the couch, you know, that whole thing. Being there physically and with coherent speech, it will make everything easier, okay? And you might need to be the more conscious one. And so if they kind of overreact or get defensive or whatever, know that you are the one that needs to be more mature simply because you're more aware, okay? All right, Pisces, it's only a week. All right, it's in and out. So I'll talk to you guys next week. Thanks. Pisces singles, four of cups. Like, no way, I'm not dating right now. Mm -mm. Or maybe you are dating, but you're not choosing. Maybe you are dating, but you're not really getting super emotionally involved, right? Because you're not going to play that game again. You're not going to do that again. I think a lot of Pisces made a very significant commitment to themselves over the past year where they said they drew a line in the sand with themselves and they said this is a very real boundary that cannot be crossed and I, and I think that you're really settling into that quite nicely and you're maturing into that quite nicely as well um, because now you know what your boundaries are and the king of wands reverses the energy that you're dealing with I don't know, the relationship people got this person, now we're getting the King of Wands reversed. I don't think it's you, I think it's someone else. Um, it could be an ex-lover, it could be, uh, yeah, Mercury retrograde causes people to come out of the woodwork a lot of times. And because Venus still going through Scorpio, there's still stuff to learn. You know, there's still stuff down there that needs to be seen and addressed. So, you know, there's, there's, um, there's still time before I think that heart really is like, okay, I'm ready. And this week, especially with just kind of adjusting to the shifts that have happened in the past week, like there's this whole revision in the sky and it's about, okay, I feel a shift and I'm very aware because I'm Pisces and I know everything. <laughs> I can feel it. And I'm just going to like let let me just sit with this for a minute. Let me just sit with it. Let me just feel it. Let me just cess it out. Let me vet it a little bit. And, um, and then I'll make decisions later, you know? Because if this person is still drudging up in your thoughts or in your dreams or your subconscious programming or whatever, then he's going to make an impact on your future decisions with the relationships and with your future dating decisions, right? Dating someone completely opposite from them specifically to not date the same person, but then it ultimately ends up kind of circling back and screwing yourself over again, or, you know, whatever the whole situation is. So, I mean, I'm glad you're taking a mature stance with that, which is great. Okay. All right, Pisces. Take care. I'll see you next week.